Hello and welcome to another video regarding what if analysis. Uh, this is pertaining to scenario. Scenario is giving you different stories of the same uh, decision that you wanted to make. And to make it a very simple uh, story, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to buy three different houses and see what would be the monthly payment for each house in order just to compare uh, the final uh, uh, values that you have to deal with every month for the three houses. Then based on those three payments, uh, you'll be able to decide. Of course, you're going to be doing some research on your own to find out what is the house, uh, the price for the house, uh, assuming that you're going to down payment you have to do that and any sort of uh, fees and all that stuff that goes along with it. And we're going to go ahead and see the loan and uh, the rate and, of course, the number of the years. The house here is going to be like down where it's going to be located. So let's say we have like uh, Key West, uh, maybe Marathon, and we're seeing the Keys and maybe the Largo. And we can go to those uh, the three houses, look at the loan, look at the rate, look at the years, and the monthly payment, and we'll be able to view those into one big scenario so we'll be able to compare it. Uh, no matter how this uh, a trivial this example is going to be for us, but it's going to really indicate the seriousness of what we can do with the uh, uh, scenario and how it's going to be used for heavy duty type of uh, uh, decision making. And uh, again, this is part of uh, the data ribbon in uh, what if analysis that is very close to the policy. So, uh, first of all, in order to really make it very nice, nice work, uh, I'm going to be able to do it just like automatically when everybody goes, and then I will try to make it look really uh, meaningful when we're trying to generate the report for the scenario. Let's assume that I have uh, four ho uh, three houses. So, the first house is located in Key West, that is the name of the city, and, and the loan is going to be, let's say, $300,000. Okay, and I already formatted uh, the sales here by putting currency before I even started the video. The rate is going to be, let's say, 4.5%. I already also formatted this by uh, uh, the color percentage. However, I didn't put literally to the two, uh, expanded it to two digits where I put the decimal point. So we need to make sure that it shows everything. And let's assume this is also going to be number. Uh, uh, for the number of the years, which is 30 years, uh, I'm not going to really go ahead and have any decimal points. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the okay, so. This is uh, the monthly payment, which is uh, going to be using uh, uh, the PMT function. And you could go to the FX here, you could call any function you want, and I'll just go ahead and say PMT function. And it's going to give me the PMT function, and it for 1. And the rate is right here, uh, 4.50 divided by 12, since we have a monthly payment or a yearly rate. And please don't ever tie the 4.5, always tie the sub address. And the number of the payment, the same exact thing, so C7 multiplied by 12 in this case. And the uh, EV, which is the present value, which is the present, uh, actually the actual loan that we want to get from the bank. And here we go. In order for us to buy this house at this price and uh, this rate be in 30 years, not going to really every house in the US, we have to pay 1528 And it shows this as a negative. Uh, value because this is a debt. So we know how to do it for one house. We're going to go ahead and do it for uh, three houses using that scenario. I'm going to delete this, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this. Of course, it's going to give us an error here uh, because there's no data associated with it. I'm going to go ahead and fix that. I will say here F error, F error. Of course, I'm going to go ahead and calculate the PMT function. Otherwise, okay, just wait. We're going to be coming to you, so wait a second. Okay, uh, so I'm going to say wait because that's my response there, showing you an ugly uh, message that nobody will know what's going on there. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and initiate the, uh, the data, go to the data ribbon, go to what if analysis, go to scenario manager. And I'm going to add it three stories. One of them we already told you about QS, but I'm going to leave a story about QRGO 
the story about one of them and they have a three in the front passes to one, one picture. So Ed, this is the first. Uh, scenario name, I'm going to go ahead and call it QS. Okay. Uh, you could put that actually without this one here. Let's see that. And the changing cells is going to be uh, from here all the way to here, four of them. Okay. So it's going to ask me now, uh, what is the first one? And I'm going to say it's QS house. Okay. And the second value is going to be the loan, which is C5. And I don't like C5. That's what I told you later. I'm going to be changing the C5 to the actual name, which is loan. And I will show you how to do that. So it's going to be the 300000 that I mentioned earlier. And I'm going to hit that. And I'm going to go to the rate, 4.5%. And the year are going to be 30. And I will say add. So I'm going to continue the scenario name for number two. I'm going to say here, middle key. Middle key is it. And it's going to be the same exact to change in cells. Uh, I could go ahead and do that, created by Dr. Jazzy. Uh, just to show you that you could actually work in three different, uh, the same scenario for three different houses. And you can have a common for done by different individuals if you want to do that. Okay, so this is Dr. Sankajazi. Go ahead and do the house. It's going to be marked on as the middle T. Marked on. And I'm going to go ahead and say this is going to be $250,000. Okay. And this is going to be, let's say, 5%. You know, and so there's maybe not a lot of things going on for you there. And the uh, number of the years you decided to pay the, with their data. So I'm going to go ahead and add this. And upper, upper key. Upper key. Upper key is it. It's the same. I could say here created by, let's say, uh, Al Woods. That's the case for me. And we're going to go ahead and say uh, Key Largo. And this house is going to be $370,000, but I bet the cheapest. You can find there uh, the interest rate is really low, 3.75. And the number of the payment is 30 years. And we're going to go ahead and add it. And notice, actually, I don't need to add another one, so I'm going to cancel. And I have the three of them, and I could go to Key West, first one, and say show. Look here, because I already embedded or built the function. It shows me middle keys, and I could go ahead and say, okay, show me. So it shows me marathon, and of course, that for key to show me. I could even make a mistake, I could have changed it. For example, instead of calling Key West, I would call it lower, lower, uh, lower keys. So, lower keys. So, those are the three locations. There's uh, Key West and lower keys, Marathon and middle keys, and Key Largo and upper keys. And here we go. So, I could go ahead and switch between them, if that's the case. Notice here, when I say uh, middle key is created by Dr. Hijazi. Uh, and here we go, upper key is created by Alwood. So, it shows me. And here, it was the default, so it wasn't really didn't change anything created by the person who owns the computer, which is myself here. So what are we going to do here in order to show the whole story? And you will see there's something need to be done really about this. So when we go through the summary, and I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, the summary is scenario summary. And what do we want to do? The result cell is going to be the calculated, which is in this case here. You can have multiple uh, resulted sales, like if you calculate the subtotal, the taxes, and the subtotal for the three different sales, you could actually select the three of them. Here we go. Notice, very nice. Uh, I guess we, we can go ahead and enlarge the world, so you're able to see it. Uh, notice, uh, this is uh, Key Largo, uh, QS, Marathon, and Key Largo. Always, the current value is going to show. I could go ahead and click on that and delete. I don't need to be redundant. Uh, I could go ahead and show you that this is uh, basically what this is very, very good. I could go ahead and take that and click on that and say format cell. I don't need any this small. I'm not thinking about pennies here. And maybe I could also get that to currency would be better. Uh, formatting uh, the cells again. Uh, I could go take it to the currency directly instead of worrying about uh, space there. Okay.
okay? So it will be able to, you know, what, what you do actually in Excel, you can do it with a report here. And notice, uh, if you go ahead and do that, that uh, the plus sign is an expansion of the detail that I showed you earlier, created by uh, Dr. Jazzy and Hollywood's and, uh, you know, it didn't change that, created. The only thing that is very unattractive about this, of course, I could go ahead and hide this, is these. What are these? These are the cell addresses that is corresponding to where I said the word loan, uh, or actually I said the house, the loan, the rate, the and, uh, the year, and also this is basically the monthly payment, which is very ugly, uh, in my opinion. I need to change those to meaningful work. And this is exactly what I'm trying to show you. So when I generate the report, it's going to be much more pleasant to the reader because you're not going to really, you know what you're doing, but most of the time you're going to generate scenarios for other people, like your manager or your colleagues or your coworker. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to go back and show you a quick way of naming Instead of this one here, C4 and C5 and C6 and C7 and C10 or whatever it is, uh, I wanted to go ahead and name and name the uh, cell here. Instead of calling it the, uh, the cell address, I want to call it the city or the house. You know, if we could go ahead and change this uh, to that doesn't matter basically. Here. If I say here city, of course, more meaningful. Or I could say here are keys, which kind of keys. And it's going to show me key largos and all that stuff. Keys means it's a little island. I could name each one of those individually. I could call it here, see here in this area right there. And I could call it here C. And hit enter. It must be hit enter. And notice now that C is going to be the name of the cell. So when I click on it, immediately change to C. Look here, change to C. And I could change this also to, I will say, loan. So it will show me uh, the loan and hit enter. And I will show here also the rate and hit enter for this one here. And I could go ahead and say this is the years. And I hit enter. And I will also click on this one here and call it uh, payment, you know, and hit enter. So now I did those individually. I'm going to show you a different way of how to make it quicker. If I run, I run the report, which already been built in it, and you notice here the report, uh, and I did the summary directly, so I don't have to worry about it. And this is actually the result cell, or even selected, because we want to read. Look how nice it is. Uh, obviously, immediately notice that the city here indicated what city here. Of course, we do that as usual. Delete that. And now the loan, the rate, the year, and the payment. So you understand what each one of those uh, actually stands for, this value here. Of course, you notice that uh, the lowest value in Marathon, which is at 1,342. Of course, when we do decide for something of that sort, there are a lot of other factors other than that. Uh, monthly payment is going to make a difference in which location you want to work with. But just to generate a quick understanding about how the scenario is using the cell, we did it this way. One more thing, if you notice, if you notice here, when you go to uh, that scenario one more time, uh, I can delete those, uh, the name of that, this one here. If I click on this one here, notice here, when I click on it, uh, I need to be able to see that now when we get city loan and all of the scenarios, uh, we recorded the uh, the payment. That's the payment here, the name. And this is, it doesn't show me this one here, so I want to see what's going on there. Maybe we deleted that by accident. And notes right there. And the rate, the loan, of course, and of course the city. So I did those individually. I don't like the fact that I had to do that individually and if i have like for example 50 uh, different cells that i really need to name for very large scenarios it's going to take me a long long time i'm going to age it through the process needlessly so i'm going to go ahead and show you also how to uh, name all of them at once because you already have the label for the cell next to them so you don't really need to go ahead and target yourself first of all let me 
in order for us to use the name again, this one here for city, I have to delete it. So I cannot really just go ahead and see all of them right here. See, it shows it goes directly to the payment to the year. And this is actually a chance for us to learn about the meaning. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the formula, where formula we have the naming manager. And you can see all the names right there, right there. So I could delete the names. Okay, I could delete the name. I could delete the name. So it's going to go back. Okay, it's going to go ahead and delete that. It says, okay, sorry about the noise. And delete, delete. I need to delete all of them. So I'm going to default back to the cell address that we've seen before. And notice here, when I click on this one here, it's going to go back to C4. And it's going to be to C5. G, C6, and C7, and C10. If I generate the report, it's not going to give me the meaningful name that we have uh, uh, seen earlier in the report. So, what is the quickest way of naming it? I'll say, okay, I'm going to select the name and the actual value. And here we go, together. And I'm going to say, create name from selection. So, I selected selected the data and I selected that label as well and I could actually do it this way better. I'm going to go ahead and select this. Here we go. And this and press the control key and this and this because I don't want to really touch the uh, B8 and B9 and C8 and C9 and I'm going to go ahead and create from the selection and I'm going to say here, not the top. I don't need the top. It's the lift column where it has the names, keys, long, weight, years, and months. If I don't like the word keys, I could change it to C. And that would be the best way of doing it. Look here. And you want to click. And we go to the name. All of them uh, appear one more time. And now, if I could go ahead and go to the data where the what if analysis generate the report as you notice, and I could go ahead to the summary, and of course that's the result cell, created all of the names are right there. Wonderful way of naming multiple, multiple uh, cells uh, directly. Of course, before we did that payment, now it's called monthly payment, since the name is not allowed to have a space, immediately added that uh, underscore for it. Well, thank you very much for watching. The only way to learn, as ever, as always the case, is to practice. Create your own problem. Uh, think about a situation where it's required a scenario for you, such as maybe, uh, let's say, a uh, trip that you wanted to take to three or four different locations, the cost of the air tickets, uh, the number of the days, uh, how much you have to pay for the hotels, how much you need to do with food, maybe in approximate of expenses. All this can be done. Get the three or four, uh, I mean, stories there and look at them and get to see how it sells them to help you to find a scenario like this in front of you and give you a really quick understanding. It really allows you at least to gather your ideas together and put it all together into one full story. Thank you again, and I hope you enjoyed this. This is Dr. Sam Majazi. Happy that you're watching my videos.